It's spring here and I was out in the garden having a look around and I noticed this. All the bark's missing off my magnolia. Now let me give you a little history of this plant. I bought it about six years ago. It's a yellow flowering magnolia. I planted it in fall and in the spring everything died back down to the ground. I thought, oh geez, it's not hardy here. But I didn't do anything right away. I waited and new growth came up from underground. And I thought, great, my plant's alive. The problem is that most magnolias are grafted plants. So I wasn't sure if the growth was from above the graft or from below the graft, and that makes a huge difference. I dug down a bit to try and find the graft, but I couldn't find a graft point, although I'm certain the plant's grafted. It's important to know whether the new growth is coming from above the graft or below the graft. If it's coming from below the graft, then it's not going to be in the magnolia I want. If it's coming from above the graft, it is the one I want. So I decided to just let it grow and I'll wait and see what it does. If it has yellow flowers, I know that the growth is from above the graft. So I've been growing this poor little guy for three or four years now and it's slowly getting better. And last fall was the first time it actually had buds on it. I was really looking forward to seeing the color of those buds. Was I wasting my time here or am I going to have a yellow magnolia? Now I come out and I find all the bark taken off. This is done by one of the rodents. Voles live under the snow, so they're crawling along on the ground and they eat the bark way down here. The bottom couple inches will be eaten. Rabbits, on the other hand, walk on top of the snow and so they eat higher up. And you can see the damage is up to about here. So that's clearly a rabbit damage. Besides, I can see the rabbit poop all around here. So he's been living here for a while. The other kind of damage that happens like this can be from a deer. The buck in the fall will come and rub its antlers on the bark, but that usually happens higher up. This is girdled bark. All of the outer layer of bark is taken off. And why this is so important is that all of the nutrients and water from the roots go to the top of the plant just underneath the bark. If you strip this outer layer off, this branch is going to die. So what do you do about this kind of a problem? The first thing I do is I assess the plant. Is the bark completely taken off this stem or just a little bit on one side? If at least half the bark is remaining, that branch will probably recover and I can leave the tree or shrub alone and it will take care of itself. But once you have more than half of the bark girdled, you might as well get rid of this branch. It's going to die. Now I know some people are really hopeful and so they leave it. And what they'll notice is that, hey, all the leaves come out here and they think, oh, it's alive. The problem is that all this upper stem is full of plant food and water. And there's enough up here to make the first set of leaves. So the fact that it leafs out does not mean it's alive. By midsummer, those leaves will brown off because it's not getting any more moisture. This branch is dead. I might as well get rid of it. But I had a close look in here, and there are some other branches in here that aren't girdled. There's a central one going straight up here. There's also a thicker branch heading off to the left. Because they're not girdled, those branches will continue to grow and they'll be fine. After having a close look at this, I think what I'm going to do is cut off all the branches that are girdled because they're going to die anyways. And then I'm going to keep this central piece because it's nice and straight. This other side piece is a little bigger and it would be nice to keep it, but it's, it's really crooked now and growing off in the wrong direction. So it's never going to make a good plant. So I think I'm going to turn this into a tree as opposed to a shrub. Now let's have a look at a couple other examples of girdled stems. This was a viburnum bush. You can see it's heavily girdled. It is a seedling of mine, so I know it's on its own root. There's no graft. Since it's not grafted and since there was a lot of damage, I decided to just cut it to the ground. So all of these are taken off. I did leave this one little stem here. It's chewed a little bit, but not too bad. So something like 70% of the bark is on there. This one will be fine, but all of the main stems were cut off and it'll just re-sprout from underneath. Th these vibrariums are pretty tough and I'll probably get about seven, eight stems coming up in a couple of weeks. 
and I'm going to have to come back here sort of midsummer and trim some of those out. I don't want to keep all of those. I only want to keep maybe two or three of the main stems and I'll want all the growth to go into those. There's no point in growing seven stems if I only want three of them. This is one of my crab apple seedlings. I've been growing it for a few years now and it's actually doing really well. I have a collar on here to protect it because all of the apples and crab apples and in fact all of the fruit bearing trees are really tasty to both voles and rabbits and they'll come and get them in the winter time. So I had to protect it. You can see it's been girdled up here up to about here. Now the stem below this where it was protected is fine but the collar I used wasn't tall enough and this is a common problem. It probably would have kept the rabbits away, but once the snow is up to this level, they're walking on top of the snow. So when you put protection on, it has to be a foot or two above the snow line. Otherwise, it's not going to do much good. This collar does protect it from voles, but it obviously didn't protect it from rabbits. Because it's girdled all the way around, this top part is going to die. So what do you do? Now a lot of people on social media say, oh, if you have a tree like this, it's dead. Pull it out and get rid of it. But that's not really true. This tree will come back. It will put out new growth and new suckers. Because this is a seedling, I know it's not grafted. Most of the crab apples and fruit trees that you'll grow are grafted. So you have to make sure the new growth comes from above the graft. All I have to do is cut it off here wait for the new growth and turn it back into a new tree. There's no reason to get rid of this tree. If I cut this off at this level, this tree has almost nothing above it now. No buds, nothing's growing, but it has a root system that's huge. So we have this big root system collecting nutrients and water and pushing it up this stem to a new growth that's maybe only this big. So what you find is that this kind of a tree now will grow really rapidly. You'll get this size of tree back in a couple of years. And the reason is this large root system that's underground. There's a bud here, there's some buds over here. So I'm going to cut it just where the girdling started. And this tree will be fine. Now what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks, all this food's going to come up here and it's going to initiate a whole bunch of buds. So what I expect is lots of new growths here, but I only want one. So I'll keep pruning this all summer long and only keep one stem coming up here. And that'll be my new tree. Here's another one of my crab apple seedlings. This one I protected differently and higher. So when the rabbits came by, they really didn't damage this main trunk. There are no bites on it at all. But I had one side branch coming out here and it's been nibbled. And I would say about 90% of the bark is gone. So this is a dead branch. Might as well get rid of it. There we go. This branch up here has been nibbled a little bit too. It's only about 50% nibbled and only in a small spot. So this branch may be okay. So I think I'll leave this one. I hope the information in this video was helpful to you. Now you'll be able to take care of any girdled trees or shrubs that you have in your garden. And I've made several other videos on pruning. I'll put a link to those in the top right hand corner. If you watch those videos, you'll learn everything you need to know about pruning. Have fun with your trees and shrubs in the garden.